In time of war, the king could call up ordinary Hittite citizens to strengthen his army. The common people were the subjects of the king and servants of the gods. Few Hittite texts directly describe the everyday life of the citizens. Most of the details can only be found in Hittite laws and official documents. Hittite society was sharply stratified, of course, into royalty at the top, the army commanders and administrators in the middle, and the peasantry, the vast bulk of the population at the base. While the upper and middle classes lived in large urban centres, many of the common people lived in scattered villages, sometimes far from the cities. During peacetime, the people worked the land, allotted to them by the king as compensation for their military or other services. Agriculture and animal husbandry were the economic backbone of the kingdom. The rural areas produced the food for the whole country. So important was farming that 40 out of the 200 articles in Hittite laws specifically dealt with agriculture and livestock. The peasants could either cultivate their own land or work royal land for a share of the crops. During the harvest season, men could also work for hire on someone else's farm. The rural Hittite settlements resembled the Wild West. Life could be harsh. High mountains cut off many villages both from the cities and from one another, making travel extremely difficult and dangerous. Frontier towns were vulnerable to attacks by bandits and enemy soldiers. Often, the Anatolian winter cut off communications completely between neighboring towns and cities, even burying the houses under mountains of snow. A harsh winter and bad harvest could lead to widespread famine. When the weather allowed travel, the farmers brought their goods to the Hittite marketplaces set up around the major cities and temples. There, they traded for commodities or crafts and paid taxes to the court. The Hittite marketplace was a bazaar, tax office and stock market, all rolled into one. Cosmopolitan in many ways, these bustling marketplaces were filled with people, both local and foreign, combing the streets for merchandise. It was even a good place to meet your future spouse. Hittite marriages were formed by strict agreements, by which the men paid the woman's family what was called a bride price. The woman's role in the relationship was determined by her husband's wishes as well as her own strength of character. She was expected to be a wife, a helping hand, and most of all, to bear children. In contrast to many Near Eastern societies, Hittite women were at least partially compensated in divorce. In marriage, as in all aspects of Hittite life, fertility was crucial. Many flaws could be overlooked as long as men and women were fertile. One's worth in Hittite society was determined to some extent by one's ability to have offspring. And so fertility was of critical importance both for men and for women. It was imp uh, important if a woman was not able to conceive or if a man was impotent uh, that, that these things affected their well-being and, and their status in society. Um, and rituals would have to be performed to, to try to deal with these problems. One of the well-known fertility rituals was described by a Hittite healer named Paskulwati. If for some man reproductive power is absent, or he is not a man with regard to women, I place a spindle and a distaff in the patient's hand and instruct him to come through the gates. As he steps in, I take the spindle and distaff away from him, and I give him a bow and arrows. At the same time, I recite as follows. 
I have just taken femininity away from you and given you back masculinity. You have cast off the behavior of a woman and have taken on the behavior of a man. The effectiveness of this therapy remains unknown. The Frontier Society was not without its disputes. All cases were brought for arbitration before the king's local governors or the town's elders who were under direct instructions from the king to exercise fairness. But more serious cases such as sorcery, murder or adultery could be taken to only one place, the king's court at Hattusha. <laughs> 